of the people that we try to to attract and, and get in here to talk to. So I don't know whether members of, to, to specifically answer your question and not do the political thing where I dodge it. I don't know uh, uh, whether a congressman or a congresswoman or, or a member of the Senate or the House or whatever, if they're listening to media and if it's working, but I can tell you that there are certain individuals that they will gravitate to to get their their views on the record because they whether they uh, whether they're listening, they respect the reach of the audience and they know that that is where their constituents are likely getting their their news as well. It used to be a lot harder to get a guest uh, being in my position or in a new media space. They would always want to gravitate to the MSNBC or the CNN or you know, with the trolls on the other side to Fox News. But there's a lot more importance and worth placed on uh, independent media now than there used to be. So it, it's tough for me to answer because yeah. I'm not, nor will I ever be, a member of Congress. Uh, do you think it's a fair, because we're talking about changing minds and, and influencing viewers, but do you think it's a fair expectation to have that, People who do what you do, uh, or or podcast hosts in general, or popular politicos on Twitter and social media, can inspire, you know, boots on the ground, um, so to speak. Like some of these folks have millions of followers. Like you mentioned, Pacman, millions of followers, yeah, yeah. and um, you know, the viewers are looking for direction very often. Their next move, you know, um, something comes yeah. up, you're covering it. And they're like, okay, and and don't leave us hanging. What should we do about it, right? Is it a fair expectation to have of folks like yourself to inspire them to action? It could be voter registration, unionizing, whatever. Is that yeah. fair? Yeah, no, it's very fair. In fact, I think the people aren't doing their goddamn jobs if they're not inspiring action and inflaming the passions nice. toward progress of their audiences. It is one of the criticisms I do get um, uh, every time David goes on vacation, not every time, but oftentimes when Pacman goes on vacation, we'll just use his um, as an example. Uh, he'll ask me to guest host. And one of the criticisms that I get, because sometimes you can't help but read through the comments when you're being, ex when you're exposed to a new audience and they don't like that I'm preachy or I'm telling them how to think, but that's, you know, that's, I'm not telling anybody how to think I'm telling people how I think, and I'm making a case for the things that I think. Um, and some people don't like it, but if you're going to be, listen, all the audience out there that are watching or that will watch this, uh, if you're coming to my channel for just the facts and this is, I'm just giving you the information and you can synthesize it however you want, that's not what you're going to get with me. You're going to get, you're going to get a passionate opinion and a case for believing what I believe. That doesn't mean I'm exactly right 100% of the time, all the time. Absolutely not. I'm human. I make mistakes. But I can tell you that I have a, a heart for making things better for the less fortunate in this country. I'm as lucky as any human being I know to be in the position that I'm in. I grew up wildly poor. Uh, I grew up uh, disadvantaged in many, many ways. But some of the, the, the privilege that I did carry with me allowed me uh, and propelled me in many ways to where I am today. And as the saying goes, I don't want to use the ladder to climb and then pull up the ladder from, from behind me so no one else can use it. I want to create a space for people to uh, flourish and, and live their, the best version of whatever life that they, can, that they can attain. You know, I do try to connect some dots in these interviews, and I'm hearing a few things that I want to uh, touch on real quick. You... I used to vote Republican myself, and I left when I realized, hey, they're not conservative at all. Mm. <laughs> they just want to privatize everything. You kind of realize it's a scam, right? And 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 you're you're like, well, no one no one over here is helping people, and I want to do that. And that's what you were saying, right? You want to you're worried about people who aren't, you know, um, being supported, and also. Um, Turning to this line of work in order to counter the right wing version of it, right? The Tommy Lawrence out there, right? I've heard that as well, too, uh, specifically Sam Cedar. That's like his whole reason for doing what he does is so that people will find an alternative. He says these names 
of these right wingers as much as possible so that when you Google them, you get his clips oh, criticizing yeah. them. Right. So kind of smart. And <laughs> very smart. Sam's right? a smart guy. That's yeah. that's uh, that's brilliant. I think I'm going to steal that. <laughs> I we all should. But um, <laughs> when but when you get right down to it, I do ask people, are you trying to change minds? Do you think you should inspire boots on the ground and i don't get as impassioned a res uh, affirmative as i just got from you and i think that there's something to like tell me this when you were answering that question did you think back to at all about some sort of regret you had <laughs> being a republican voting that way Maybe you wish you had voted differently earlier in your life. Do you have any regret that maybe motivates you to do what you do now? Or is that, am I just making things up out of thin air? No, 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 you're, you're right. I just, like, I don't feel guilt about what I, how I voted. I feel regret, absolutely. But I was yeah, on my journey. Too. I was raised, I was brainwashed and indoctrinated into a bizarre uh, version of Christianity. I was I was told the sky was green when the sky is clearly blue. So it, it takes a while to break free of that cult-like, bizarre um, worldview. I mean, in the, the, the in the world I grew up, and I was taught by my parents that like Ruby Ridge in Idaho, where I grew up in northern Idaho. Um, those people were patriots and the government was oppressing them when mm -hmm. those people were fucking Nazis. Mm -hmm. Randy Weaver was a, a white supremacist, a white nationalist psycho. Uh, did, were there mistakes made on the part of the government? Of course there were, yes. But these people weren't heroes. So when I witness what's taking place now relative to the militia groups and the three percenters and the Oath Keepers and the Proud Boys, those would have been people I, I looked up to. I, I even maybe um, emulated, but I came out of that and it, it's because of the journey that I'm here. Do I regret the votes? Yeah. Do I wish I would have come around a little earlier um, in my teenage years? Yeah, of course. But regret, yes. Guilt, uh, I don't know. Maybe I just don't give enough space for that. Um, I, I do think it would be ironic if that upbringing fueled what you're doing now, because you're more than making up for any votes you cast back in the day. And and someone in the chat says, when we know better, we do better. I yeah. think that's true. Yeah, yeah that's right. Whoever Perfect said that to... is very that's that's brilliant. Right.